Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today is the day that I finally talk to you about how I study pharmacology. I know a lot of you guys have been requesting this video, but I didn't want to film the video just because you guys were requesting it without actually having gathered enough information to help out anyone that has been struggling with pharmacology. And while this video is not going to be about how to study pharmacology per se, I'm going to be telling you how I managed to get high grades in pharmacology in pharmacy school through my study techniques that I'm going to be sharing with you guys in this video. When I was first introduced to pharmacology, I definitely had my fair share of struggles and I definitely didn't really like it at first. Add to that all the fear mongering around pharmacology. A lot of people would share on social media how much they disliked pharmacology. So I just had this dread when I was studying pharmacology at first but it didn't take long before I sat down and analyzed why that was. I found that it boiled down to memorizing a long list of medication names that just seemed impossible at first. But if you are in science in general, if you are in medicine, pharmacy or nursing, you're definitely going to be faced with a lot of things that you need to memorize. So you kind of have to find the way that works for you when it comes to memorization. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the techniques that can help you retain information for longer and also not make you hate your life when you're studying. But before we start, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and have that notification bell turned on so that you get notified every time I upload a video. I usually make videos to help students everywhere to navigate their studies. Okay so first and foremost just make sure that you understand the basic principle or the main principle. So in pharmacology one we have to study hypertension and to study hypertension medication you need to first be introduced to hypertension as a disease and how it forms and the pathophysiology of it. So how it comes about basically and although medications tend to show a lot more on exam paper the introduction to the disease is actually the foundation upon which later information is built. So if you're studying hypertension, just make sure that you understand it very well from each aspect because medications are based on little areas where we can fix hypertension. So if you don't know how hypertension comes about and what the problem with it is, then you wouldn't really understand the mechanism of medications later on. So if you think you're too smart to be studying hypertension or just you already know what it is, so you skip it and then you jump right into the medications of hypertension, you're not doing yourself any favor. You're building without a foundation. So everything that you will study later, A, you will spend a lot of time studying it because you wouldn't really understand what it's about and you will look up a lot of things online. B, you wouldn't really understand the mechanisms that well of the medications because they're based on the pathophysiology of the disease. So if you have no idea how the disease comes about, how would you know how to fix it? So make sure you don't skip that bit. It makes a huge difference. Divide subjects into smaller parts. So for example, if I'm studying hypertension, I divide it into an introduction to the disease and different treatment approaches. So like the intro that is in the textbook before you jump right into the medication and pharmacological classes. And then I split the pharmacological classes into smaller parts. So beta blockers, for example, and then diuretics and then calcium channel blockers. So I just divide them into smaller pieces. And that way, when I know that I'm going to be studying hypertension, I'm not discussing because I know that I don't have to sit down and study hypertension as a whole. I can sit down and study today the introduction and then later I can study beta blockers and then I can study calcium channel blockers and it's not as much information as it would if I had just studied hypertension as a whole. So if you're someone like me that gets discouraged when they know that they have to study a lot of things, trick yourself into studying by dividing the information into smaller bits that is much easier to study. Expose yourself to information multiple times. One of the best ways to memorize and to make sure that information sticks around for long is to study it over a long period of time repeatedly. While cramming seems like a nice option before a pharmacology final, you usually just forget everything that you've studied once you get out of the exam hall, if not even sooner. So in pharmacology 3, I had to study antibiotics and antibiotics was such a dense subject and we had to study a lot of information. And I remember that the PDF of antibiotics was over a hundred slides. So I knew that I would be discovered courage to sit down and study that much of information. What I did instead after attending lectures and 
kind of having a basic understanding of what's going on, I then decided to expose myself to the PDF or the slides over a period of time. So what I would do was that I would get the PDF on my tablet or you don't have to use a tablet, maybe you can print them or you can use your laptop and then I would dedicate a small amount of time at the end of each day to just go over the slides and to be familiar visually with the slides and where everything was and I would read it out loud to myself and making sure that I just kind of understand the information. I don't have to memorize it yet, I just have to expose myself to it. It's like you're reading something that is interesting to you but not having to keep the information in your head. What I would do also was that I would keep a notebook with me alongside. Now I definitely have a notebook for each course so that when I go to lecture and the lecturer kind of says something that I know I would need later, I would jot it down in my notebook but I would also keep it with me when I'm studying the PDF like that because for example, if I'm studying two classes of antibiotics and then I see that they share the same adverse effect. So for example, two antibiotics have neurotoxicity as an adverse effect. I would type them down. This way, I'm not only engaging my brain, I'm also making a summary for myself later on. And I'm not just passively reading text. I'm also trying to kind of connect different texts in the PDF. I would make sure that A, I'm reading it while I'm also focusing on the information that I'm reading, I'm not just passively going through the slides and that I give each slide enough time to be scanned well by my brain and then I would also make sure that I went through the entire PDF before bed. It doesn't have to be the only thing that you study in a day. You can be studying something properly in the morning and at night before bed you just go over that PDF. So again, active reading. I cannot stress that enough. I definitely made a video before on active reading and how to read from a textbook. Read out loud. I definitely recommend you doing that because that way you're not only visually going over the text, you're also hearing yourself saying it and saying it. So you're reading, speaking and hearing. And I would say this is the best way to study pharmacology. One of the many reasons I didn't like studying pharmacology was that I found that medication names were too complex to memorize and keep in my brain. I remember when the professor would say a medication name out loud for the first time, I would feel that they might as well speak German because I didn't really get it. And I would feel discouraged because I would feel like there was no way for me to memorize that. Well, I recommend many things to memorize medication names. First, you need to read them out loud multiple times for yourself so that you practice saying them and also hearing them. When you hear the medication name a lot, it's much easier for you to say it. And I find that if I say it enough, and I hear myself saying it over and over, it's much easier for me to say it later when I'm not studying. So while you're studying, make sure that you're reading out loud. Next, break it down. So if you have a complex medication name, oftentimes it's too long. So if you break it down into smaller pieces that you can study separately and then join them together, it's much easier to study. The third thing that I would recommend is to look online for suffix and prefix that medications under the same pharmacological class share. The most famous example is beta blockers. They end with olol. So when you see that suffix, you know that it belongs to beta blockers. It doesn't work with every everything, but it's definitely a helpful shortcut. So terminology and recognizing prefix and suffix that different medications share would definitely cut down on the time you spend memorizing medications. So for example, after understanding how antibodies are named, I now can recognize their sources. So I know if it comes from a human or an animal and which type of animal by studying the terminology and how the name came about, basically. Write down and recite. The night before the exam, there is no time for me to scan anymore. I need to sit down and actually face what I fear, which is memorizing and writing. But the positive thing here is that I've been exposing myself to the information over a long period of time, either by attending lectures or listening to lecture records or studying and hearing myself studying out loud or by scanning the PDF, just merely doing that. I have been exposing myself to the information. So it's not the first time for me when I'm sat down and trying to write down and memorize actively. So when the exam is approaching, I don't have to cram, but I know that I need to do a little bit more work to actively memorize drug names. So I would sit down and grab my notebook and a pen and I would just jot down medication names. So I would read a PDF slide and then I would try to recite 
the information on my own without looking at it so I try to actively recall it if you don't have time to write down anything you can just read a slide and just try to actively recall it without looking at the slide itself and if you find yourself struggling with a certain bit you can write it down multiple times and make sure that you understand it very well because I find if you're struggling to memorize something you probably don't really understand it that well but if it's something that doesn't need much understanding just a mere medication name then try to write it down multiple times and say it out loud multiple times or maybe try to link it to something else in real life that would make you remember it in the exam hall last but not least revise and summarize now as i told you before I always keep a notebook with me throughout the term. I take notes in lectures and I take notes when I'm studying and I write down anything that I feel like I'm struggling with in my own words so that when I later look at it, I remember it. So at the end of the term, my notebook would look like a mess, but it would have a lot of notes that I know I needed them because I made them for myself. So throughout the term, just make sure that you're writing down. Even if you don't really understand what you're writing down yet, maybe you're in a lecture and the professor is just giving you a summary and you don't really know what exactly they're talking about because you haven't yet started studying you will want to check out that summary trust me don't just skip it write it down and the night before the exam it would be a nice study guide for myself they don't have to be the cleanest neatest looking notes the most aesthetically pleasing just write down anything for yourself and you will thank yourself later so before going out to the exam hall i would bring out my phone and take pictures of my notes so on my way to the exam hall i would check out the notes without having to carry all the notebook that I have with me. So that would be the last tip that I have for you. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you found what you wanted when you clicked on this video. If you did, leave a comment below and let me know what you want to see next or if you have any tips and advice for other students or for me. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and check out my social media links if you want to connect. I keep them in the description. Thanks so much for watching and you'll see me in the next video.